Next on Worcester News tonight, cleaning up from Tuesday's storm. Why snow removal could take a few days to complete across the city. Plus, a look at how the snow impacted MBTA commuter trains. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We begin tonight with a shooting investigation in Worcester. Police say it happened late Tuesday night on Coral Street. According to police, a parked car was shot at multiple times. Police say there were several bullet holes in the driver's side front and rear windows. No one was in the car, so no one was hurt. No injuries were reported. It happened in front of 57 Coral Street. The owner of the vehicle and witnesses told police a dark colored car pulled up next to the Nissan, fired shots and then sped off. Anyone with any information on the incident is asked to call Worcester Police. In Worcester, residents cleaning up from Tuesday's massive winter storm while others are adjusting their schedule to accommodate for Tuesday's cancellation, including the state high school basketball playoffs. The storm actually brought more high school basketball games to the Worcester area tonight at WPI. Two games originally scheduled at the TD Garden in Boston were moved to Worcester for tonight so they could be played. Cambridge and Needham played in the first game, followed by Andover and Braintree. The games, the games drew a large crowd fans for both teams at WPI's campus tonight. Being able to play at the garden, so I'm sure they would have liked that. But uh, the Columbus College is a nice campus and a nice, nice gym to play in. In addition to WPI games, there were in addition to WPI games were also played at the DCU Center tonight after being postponed on Tuesday. The finals will take place later this week in Springfield. In Worcester, no rest for the Department of Public Works. Crews were out treating roads today, and the storm could be a costly one for the city. Our Olivia Lemon explains. Businesses in Worcester spent the day digging out after a massive winter storm, which comes with a big price tag. We'll open up today for lunch and uh, digging out and trying to make as many parking spots as possible right now. Paul Barber is the owner of the Flying Rhino on Shrewsbury Street. The more than foot of snow in the city caused him to close his restaurant Tuesday. With the snow, no one's going to come out and go through the, the tutorials of trying to get here. Barber says in New England, you have to be prepared for all types of weather, but having to close shop for a day affects his business. Any day that you're not having that register ring is, you know, tough, you know, especially when we have 50, 60 people that work for us. It's uh, it's tough to try to make payroll at the end of the week and do everything we need to do. Smart Motors on West Boylston Street was also closed Tuesday. Owner Chris Durnell says he will spend most of the day Wednesday snow blowing and shoveling and trying to make up for business he lost. There's not much you can do about it. It's Mother Nature. I felt like February and March kind of switched the months a little bit. Meanwhile, DPW Commissioner Paul Moosey says 395 pieces of equipment were out on the roads Tuesday. He says the wet, heavy snow made it more difficult to plow. That led to uh, really ice pack that we didn't anticipate uh, on the roads and, and it took a considerable effort uh, to, to remove all that last night during the overnight. The latest storm will cost the city hundreds of thousands of dollars. Moosey says the snow removal budget was already exceeded. He's hoping this will be the last of the snow. But it actually was probably less than it could have been. It was probably less severe. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. Following the cleanup from winter storm Stella, state police are warning drivers to clear snow off their car before driving. State police stopped a few drivers today with snow and ice on their roof or covering the back windshield. Here's a look at 290 in Worcester earlier today. Driving at fast speeds with ice and snow on your car can put other drivers at risk. The drivers we spoke with say they're surprised at how common it is in the wintertime. You know, wiping your windshield off, getting hit with the snow from another car, sliding on the road because of it is definitely, a, definitely an issue. We go from clearing snow off your car to clearing it from driveways and sidewalks. And many were out shoveling and digging out their cars for the first time since yesterday's snowstorm. Wet and heavy snow can make it difficult and also unhealthy to shovel for some people. Our Rosalind Flaherty reports. Siblings Donna and Raymer Rennie were hard at work trying to shovel Tuesday's winter storm away. Doing it together makes a grueling job a lot less 
miserable. They say the heavy snow was difficult to move. Metal shovels and pickaxes out here. You know, we were like breaking up the ice. I'm sore right now. Doctors at St. Vincent Hospital in Worcester warn shoveling heavy snow can lead to health problems. Back injuries and shoulder injuries. This is a form of moderate to intense exercise and if folks aren't used to doing moderate to intense exercise that provides quite a bit of stress in the body and quite a bit of stress on the heart. Dr. Douglas Waite says this time of year he sees patients who have had heart attacks related to snow shoveling. Before you start shoveling snow, any amount of snow, make sure you're in a decent amount of shape and if you're not you need to A, get in shape or B, have somebody else do the snow shoveling for you. Dr. Christopher Vinton says using good body mechanics can prevent injuries. Bending at the knees, not you know, putting all the stress on your lower back, uh, working more with the, sho uh, the shovel in towards your body and not extending it too far away. The Rennies say they pace themselves to prevent injuries. The tortoise wins the race, right? So <laughs> just um, take your time and take care of yourself, and that's what we're trying to do. Roslyn Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Getting back to a normal schedule after a winter storm has been a challenge for the in the past for the MBTA, but they vowed yesterday's storm wouldn't cause major delays on Wednesday. In recent years, the T has used new technology to keep tracks clear of snow and ice. The MBTA has a track loader and a snowzilla, which is a snowblower that melts snow as it moves along the rails. Passengers we spoke with arriving at Union Station this evening say they did not experience any delays going to or from Boston. Surprisingly, it went well because I was kind of nervous because yesterday I know they kind of switched up the schedules because of the, um, the storm, so I was kind of afraid today, but it was actually on time this morning, 7.30. The train got there at the time that it was supposed to and then it was a smooth ride. I mean, I mean no, no problems at all. The T has faced some scrutiny in the past for train delays. Meanwhile, a proposal by the MBTA to cut weekend commuter rail services is drawing criticism from city and local officials. The proposal comes as part of an effort by the state to cut costs. Some say the move could have an alternative effect on public transportation. Our Catherine Andrioli explains. Yeah, and it's been noted for some time now that we also have a revenue issue uh, in our transportation system, and I think this is a good indication of that. The MBTA's proposal to cut weekend commuter rail services is being criticized by the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce, who says the cuts would do more harm than good. The idea of cutting service, weekend service across the state for commuter rail is a bad idea. It's bad for the economy. I think it's bad in terms of the message that it sends. The proposed cuts are part of a cost-cutting initiative by the state for a $42 million budget deficit for the upcoming year. The MBTA's ridership report shows a decrease in Saturday ridership in 2016. According to the T, eliminating weekend commuter rail services would save $10 million. If approved, weekend commuter rail services would stop running in July and could last an entire year. And people need it not just for leisure on weekends, but people need us for their jobs. I mean, one of the reasons we added working with Charlie Monahan at Mass College of Pharmacy and others, the, the stop at Yaki Way wasn't for the Red Sox. It was for the Longwood Medical Center, which many people in Central Mass in the Metro West area go to work. State Senator Michael Moore says the cuts would have a negative impact on cities like Worcester, where many college students rely on public transportation and want access to Boston. Students that have come to school out here, um, that's part of the, the decision-making process. Take advantage of the, the great colleges and universities we have here, but you still have direct access into Boston. Bus is not that convenient because it, is, it doesn't run as frequently as a train, so that's a big hassle for us. Murray says the Worcester line has grown significantly in recent years. He hopes the state can reconsider budget cuts. Hospitals are our biggest employers, uh, not only here in Central Mass, but uh, in, in Metro West and in Boston area, and those uh, are seven days a week, 24-7. In Worcester, Catherine Andrioli, Worcester